This recording is for the residents of Port Elizabeth and surrounding areas and will deal with your erratic water supply and the real cause for it. The last few years has seen an increased pressure on the dwindling water supply and the levels of the supply dams that feed Port Elizabeth with water. Until very recently, the average water level of the supply dams reached extremely low levels. There were even times when if you went to a tap in your house and opened it, you wouldn't get a drop of water coming out of it. Nobody even questioned this, believing that the reason for it was that there just wasn't enough water. Well, while the dam levels were at such low levels, the municipality got away with it, telling you that there just wasn't enough water, or there was a burst pipe, etc., etc. The truth is that the severe low levels of the dams were a perfect excuse and a smokescreen to hide another much bigger problem. I'm sure that everyone living in Port Elizabeth and surrounds has all heard the advertisements on the radio asking people to use water sparingly, etc., which is a good thing. But I'm also sure that everyone has heard the municipal spokespeople from Waterworks come onto the radio and give their rundown of the state of affairs. How many times have you been told that as soon as the Noetgedag Treatment Works extensions are complete, all Port Elizabeth's water issues will be a thing of the past? Let me tell you a little about the new extension to the Noetgedag Treatment Plant. But before I do that, let me tell you about the state of the existing Noitgedacht plant. The existing Noitgedacht water treatment plant is a fairly large plant with a fairly large capacity as designed. But the current state of the plant has decreased the capacity of the plant to process water drastically. Let me give you a few things to think about. Port Elizabeth's supply dam catchment areas has seen some rain recently and the average levels of the dams has risen considerably. Yet, I am willing to bet that if you go to a tap in your house right now, the pressure you are getting is nowhere near what it should be traditionally. You should know that your water is fed, in most cases, from a reservoir on high-lying ground to an area of lower-lying ground. However, the reservoirs are on average quite a few meters deep. This means that the fuller the reservoir is, the higher the pressure you will see at your tap. Why is the pressure then still low? It is because the reservoirs barely have any water in them. The fact is that the pumps throughout the entire waterworks are in such a state of disrepair that most are unserviceable most of the time. Because so many of the pumps are unserviceable, they are forced to literally make use of the vast network of pipes and valves under the ground to bypass some reservoirs and route water to others whose feed pumps are broken. The entire waterworks is suffering from a massive lack of pumping capacity due to the absolutely shocking state of the pumps that should be pumping the water. Getting back to the Neutgedag plant, 20 years ago you would have been able to eat off the floor of the pump room at Neutgedag. Today it is impossible to even get to the pumps without wearing a pair of waterproof boots. This is because the amount of mud coming from the leaking glands of the pumps, those that still work that is, it has got so bad that they have literally wrapped some of these pumps in plastic to keep the spraying water and mud from getting onto the electrical control panels which are situated right besides the pump motor combinations. You might ask why they don't just replace the seals, right? Well, besides the fact that they simply don't have the money to buy new seals, it is physically impossible to isolate the station using the isolation valves because they are in such a poor condition that they do not close properly. The amount of water that they pass when in the closed position is enough to overpower the pump floor drainage system. There are situations there where the protection systems on the pumps are bridged because if left to do their job, they would shut the pumps down. In other words, the pumps are being run to destruction and believe me, the day is coming when no amount of Heath Robertson jury rigging of the systems is going to be enough to keep the pumps from self-destructing. In the past, the maintenance of the water treatment plants was handled by, firstly, an instrument-rated electrician at every plant, who also did most of the mechanical work as well. That was at every single plant, that is Churchill, Jelansjacht, Luri, as well as Neutgedacht. All these people were assisted by a team from a workshop dedicated to handling the maintenance of these plants. Today, there is literally only one properly qualified mechanical fitter to take care of the entire waterworks treatment plants. He is assisted by one unqualified but skilled person. As far as electricals go, there is, as far as I can determine, just two electricians. This is to take care of the entire Port Elizabeth and surrounds waterworks. This is the substations, domestic electric supply, 
all power supply and control of all pump motor combinations, the extensive radio telemetry system and all instruments that feed it with information. Combine the fact that there is literally no money to buy any spares and the fact that these poor artisans tasked with maintaining the plants are expected to perform miracles with absolutely or almost no resources. Let's talk about the new extension to the Neuterach plant. Let's get back to how many times you have heard Mr. Barry Martin on the radio telling you that as soon as the new extension to the plant comes online, the water shortage problems will be a thing of the past. Well, I have some news for you. The new extension to the plant has been standing for months. There is absolutely nothing going on there at all. The contactors have, for the second time that I'm aware of, abandoned site. They have even dismantled their heavy machinery and removed it from site. You can go there right now. You will not find a single contractor or construction worker on site. My guess is that they have abandoned site because of non-payment. As I said, this is not the first time that this has happened with this new extension. Mr. Martin is in fact not lying, but he isn't telling you what year. So the next time Mr. Barry Martin tells you that, ask the question, when or what year will the plant be finished? How many of you remember being told of an emergency pipeline that was laid a while ago already? Anyway, when last have you heard anything about that pipeline? I have it on good authority that the municipality does not have the pumping capacity or the pumps themselves for that matter to pump any water through that pipeline. It is there but it is totally useless and redundant because of a lack of pumping capacity. It has never been used as far as I know. It is my guess that even if Port Elizabeth were to get enough rain tomorrow to overflow each and every supply dam, their water supply problems would not improve even slightly. As things stand, conditions can and will only get worse. Port Elizabeth residents, I would suggest that you start asking some questions and most of all, make sure that you have some way to store enough water to last you a month or two because it is going to take only one major fault to render them basically unable to keep the water flowing. For the rest of South Africa, don't think that similar conditions don't exist everywhere else. The plain truth is that this country and its infrastructure is being run into the ground while all protection mechanisms have been short-circuited. Sooner or later, these things simply have to come to a grinding halt. There is no other outcome possible. Please like and share this on as many social media platforms as possible. It is the only way that my message gets out there. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I have to ask why not. You have absolutely nothing to lose. If you would like to support my channel and my work, in the description field I have provided ways in which both local as well as international listeners can make a contribution. If you would like to make a crypto contribution, also in the description field, I have provided a Bitcoin as well as an Ethereum wallet address. If you'd like to contribute any other cryptos, simply send me an email to the address also provided in the description field and I will supply you with the relevant wallet address. To all the amazing people who do make a contribution, I say a huge, huge thank you. Without you, these recordings would not be possible. Until next time, be safe out there.